Hi guys, it's Anissa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a video that I do every single month on this channel. It is where I shop my stash with you guys. This month is a little bit different and you guys will be able to see that. My setup is completely different now. I'm still kind of getting adjusted and used to it. It's been like this for like two or three days. The concept of the video is still going to be the same. Basically, if you guys have never seen my version of shop my stashes, what I do is I kind of go through my collection and pick out the makeup that I'm going to use for the week, but now it is going to be for the month. I kind of just use this as an opportunity to talk to you guys, give you guys life updates, basically what is going on in my life when I'm not staying in front of the camera. I really want you guys to know who I am completely 100% all the way. If you guys are interested to see the products that I used and what has been going on in my life, then keep on watching. But before you go any further, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I post on this channel every four days, so you never have to miss me for too long. But yeah, let's get into it. I got a completely new setup. So if you guys have seen my videos in the past, which I will link a playlist, I used to have a desk right here and then this was scooted all the way over into that corner. I used to have a small black table on this wall right over here. Usually when I do these videos, I will go through all these drawers and we pick one thing and I will do it on a weekly basis. Over here, I have these drawers. So I have already like shot my stash for the month. This is all the makeup that I'm gonna be using. All this makeup was in here to begin with. So this one's going to be a little bit different because I already shot my stash for the month. So I'm just going to pull stuff that's from in these drawers. I'll kind of give you guys like a super quick overview of the stuff that I picked. I used to pick one of each thing for the week, but from now on in the future, I'm gonna pick five or six different things and show you guys what I'm picking for the month and then just picking one of each product and doing my face with that. So this one's gonna be a little bit shorter. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of give you guys that background, especially for you guys that have seen my videos before. You're probably like, what the heck is going on? So <laughs> that is just a little update for you guys. I am really all over the place, so excuse that. I'm gonna try to stay as like on task as I can. I have a lot to say, but I don't have a lot to say. So before I get to scatterbrain, the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and show you guys how I've been doing my eyebrows because I've been doing them completely differently. So I'm going to get into that and then that's really the only like tutorial part of the video that I'm gonna be doing and then we can talk. Usually I will either use a pencil or a pomade. So as of recently I have been using a pencil and a pomade. I mentioned I think either in my last shot my stash video or the one before that that I really felt like my brows just were not the best brows that they could be and I think I'm getting there especially with this new technique. I will go in with a brow pencil. Everybody has an area on your eyebrow where your hair grows straight up. So for me, that ends about right here and then my hair starts to grow this way. So in that area, all I'm going to do, just upward strokes. And it helps me if I brush out my eyebrows before I start, cause then I can kind of see where my natural brow is. I just outline all of my eyebrows, so the shape that I want it to be, I will do that with the pencil. I don't outline the front part cause I want it to kind of fade and then get really full. So I will start right about where I was talking about where the hair will start to grow in this direction. And I really follow my natural shape until I get to my arch. I like my arch to be just a little bit higher than what it is. I always do the top first. Whenever I try to do the bottom, it completely throws me off. I don't know if you guys are the same way or not. And this is what I love about doing my brows first is that I can like kind of use my fingers and wipes and stuff and it's not gonna mess up the rest of my face. But on the bottom of the brow, I will start at the beginning. Now that I have the outline, the shape that I would like, I'm going to go in with my brow pomade and really just fill in any sparse areas from here back. I don't use any pomade at this front part where the hair goes straight. I always do my tail first and then I will see how my brow looks and if I want it to be a little bit less ombre, then I will fill in this top part of my arch. I will just go over my arch then all I do is just carve them out and this is just going to help fix any mistakes that I made. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'm back. I did both of my eyebrows. If I'm looking down, it's because I have a list of things to talk about sitting in front of me because I'm hoping if I have a list, it'll keep me a little bit more on task. I think it was actually right after I put up this video last month, my Shop My Stash video for the month. I had not worked for a good two-ish weeks. For those of you that are new, I am a certified home health aide, so I work in an assisted living. I'm PRN, so it just depends on the month. Sometimes I work a lot, sometimes I don't. And last month was one of those months where I just really was not on the schedule that much. And most of the time I get most of my money from picking up shifts. So I will work really long stretches and then have a really long time off. I went to go get tested at my work and this whole time my building has been COVID free. I feel sort of, I don't wanna say I feel bad, but I know that in these videos it can seem really repetitive when I talk about like COVID and stuff like that, you know, the pandemic that's going on. But um, these videos are an opportunity for me to let you guys into my life when I'm not sitting in front of a camera. Unfortunately, like COVID is a very big part of my life, especially with my job and everything. I know a lot of you guys use this as an escape and I hope that you don't find that irritating because I know sometimes, I know at least I use videos for an escape. Don't forget what's going on and don't try to like put it to the side. It's really important what's going on and you know, it affects all of us. Anyways, I was going to get tested for COVID because we have been getting tested weekly for about a month prior to this. I pull up to my work and there's all these people standing outside in hazmat suits. I walk into the building. One of my coworkers informs me that we have had about 20 positive cases. So keep in mind, usually when stuff happens at work, somebody will text me and tell me what's going on. I get that, you know, it wasn't someone's first priority to let me, a PRN person, know what was going on. My first reaction, I just started crying because, you know, when you tell especially an old person that they have tested positive for COVID-19, like that is to them a death sentence. It was really hard. The next day I was getting ready to work what I thought was going to be a two day stretch, three day stretch, which quickly, very quickly turned into a six day stretch of working. When I was working, I had noticed I was getting the worst headaches ever. And they were really triggered by super strong smells besides like the air. So anything that was added, like candles, really strong smelling food, it really like triggered me to have a really bad headache. I really just didn't think anything of it. I thought that I was just having a lot of headaches because I was working a lot. I was drinking like two to three Cokes a day, keep in mind. I have one sitting right here next to me. If I drink Coke every day, it'll be like one, but I was drinking like two, three, four to help with these headaches. The last day of my stretch was Thanksgiving. And that's another thing. This was my first year working a holiday. It honestly didn't even feel like Thanksgiving, not because of working, but because of everything that's going on. My family personally decided that we were not going to gather just to keep everybody safe. And even if they would have decided to do something, I would not have come because I was working on a COVID unit. The first day I had off was Black Friday. I went Black Friday shopping, which if you guys wanna see my haul, I will link it right over here and also down below. It's in my haul playlist. I just was so tired and worn out from working because they're eight hour shifts. So I had worked 48 hours that week and then sometimes I came in early. I think I have ended up working a little over 50 hours that week. I just decided that I was not going to do anything over the weekend. My boyfriend worked, so I stayed home and, you know, did YouTube stuff, cleaned, whatever. Just really took the weekend to myself and just like gave it as a recharging time. Keep in mind, that was over fall break, so that's why I was working that much. Monday comes around. Everybody is tired on a Monday. You just, you have to get back into the routine of things, you know, after having the weekend off. I had driven to school that day, I think and my boyfriend was acting, he was just acting a lot more tired than normal. I mean, and I really didn't think anything of it because I mean, if any of you are, are teenagers right now and in high school, like we're all tired. We go home and we're laying on my couch and he was like, Anissa, he was like, I just do not feel good. Like I feel sick and my stomach hurts. Like I just don't feel good. I take his temperature. His temperature was 101. Keep in mind, I had the weekend off. So I had Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. And then I was supposed to go back to work Monday to work another shift. So I was like, okay, well you probably need a wrap. And keep in mind, like I feel fine. I'm tired, but I mean, I think I was still just recovering from working the six day stretch that I was on. We go and get him a rapid. And if you have ever gotten a rapid, you know within the first five minutes you will be able to tell if it's positive or not you're supposed to wait 15 but you can tell and as soon as the guy put the stick into the formula i mean those two lines positive lines popped up 
so quickly. So I was like, well, you know, like you have to quarantine now. I have to quarantine now. So I called my work. I didn't have any symptoms. So a lot of the times, I mean, even if you were in close contact with somebody, it's so weird. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have it, but you still need to quarantine. So I called my work and I was like, hey, my boyfriend just tested positive. I've been around him all weekend. So I would like to take a rapid. I drop him off and I get to work a little bit early. I come up positive. That was the first of the month. That kind of takes you through everything that happened to me during the like last parts of November I really just worked and then I was quarantined until the 12th. My life really just got put on hold. As human beings we have the right to be mad about stuff when it doesn't go our way but there's only so much that you can do with that. Like you can choose to be upset and you know whatever but then you also have to get to a point where you're like okay it is what it is there's nothing I can do about it. That is what has been going on but I wanted to mention the headaches and stuff because that was number one, a really big part of kind of what was going on with me. I'm pretty sure that that was my symptom, which is so weird because my last lady told me today, because she got quarantined too, this guy that she had given a facial, he was completely fine. And the only thing wrong with him was that his hands were like really purple. They could not figure out what was wrong with him and then I had and decided to test him for COVID. Lo and behold, hand COVID. That just shows you guys like this thing is not a joke at all. It's very, very real. Please be safe. Wear your mask. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about was my skin. My skin has been so problematic. Like look at this. Do you guys see that huge pimple on my face right here? It has been so super textured more than usual. I really don't know if it's the weather or what, but my pores, especially right in here, are huge. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think it was possible to have pores this big. If you guys have any really good products for uh, minimizing the appearance of pores because you cannot actually minimize your pores themselves. It's scientifically impossible. I just ordered the Polish Choice BHA and the toner. If you guys have used either of those, please let me know because I'm a little bit confused on how I'm supposed to use them. I thought that the BHA exfoliant was supposed to be used as a toner, but apparently I think you're supposed to use it before or after. I don't want to be overusing it, especially if it's an exfoliant. My debit card actually expired. I wasn't able to go to the bank because I was in quarantine. I had to wait until Friday to be able to go and actually order the new card because most banks, they will just send you a new one in the mail a couple of months before your old one expires. That way you're not in the situation that I am. But y'all know my luck. It just, the tables don't turn that way. Guys, I forgot to hello correct and cream contour. That's how all over the place I am. I have not ordered any Christmas presents for anybody yet. So I'm gonna be playing like Russian roulette, hoping that these gifts get here on time. And I'm also upset because I'm going to have to pay for the expedited shipping, which is my least favorite thing to do in the world. I would rather walk to wherever it is and pick it up, whether it be across the country or not. I have not used this foundation in a really long time, and I'm pretty sure it's actually the first high-end foundation I ever used, and if you ask me if it's the same bottle, if you really wanna know, yes it is. <laughs> but I wish you guys could see all the texture on my face, it's so bad. I've noticed any imperfections on your face will look really accentuated and awful, when you put cream products on, but then once you put powder over top of it, it's usually fine. I know this in my head, but I still have a mini panic attack every time. Can't stop, won't stop. I do have some exciting news. You guys cannot tell, but I am in a completely different location to kind of go into depth on that. If you guys have watched any of my Shop My Stash videos before this one, you will know that my old setup was I had on one wall a white desk, and then I had my makeup storage, and then on the wall across from it, I had my thumbing set up. So now where the white desk was is where I'm sitting. I decided to just get rid of that white desk and give it to my sister because really all I was using was the countertop space and I was just using it to store makeup. So I was like, I might as well just get a bigger table to film with and then I can just have everything right in front of me. And then I have my makeup collection sitting right next to me. So I think this will just be a lot easier and convenient. I'm getting some new equipment too. I've had the lights that I've had for years. So I'm hoping that you guys will be also be able to tell a difference in quality. You guys probably won't see that until like January's videos because I have pretty much all of December's videos filmed. I guess I will just talk to you guys about how I'm doing overall in general. I would say that I'm doing all right. I have no complaints as of right now. Fingers crossed that it stays that way, but life is good despite everything that is going on. I have really been trying to stay as positive as I can. 
figuring out where I want to go on spring break. Hopefully we get a spring break. I'm not sure if I told you guys that I did get into my top college. I think I did. Since the college I'm going to is doing an exemption next year for housing, most colleges you will find require freshmen to live on campus, but they're doing a lot of exemptions next school year and even this school year if you're in college now. So we have just decided that I am just going to get a one bedroom apartment and the one that I am looking at right now actually has an office space. So I would be able to kind of have a filming room, which I think will really be good for my mental health. Not that my mental health isn't good right now, but especially me being in a new environment. I was going to just put my filming stuff in my room, being able to kind of have a separation of just, which this is relaxing to me, but at the same time, just having a space to, you know, like really feel safe and do what I love and then also have a, a space where I can like cuddle up and you know watch TV and do whatever um, and even put a desk in my room to do homework I think will be really good for me with everything going on who knows how long we'll stay like this for I know this is a beauty channel but when that time does come next year if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing just let me know like moving vlogs and stuff like that because I personally like watching moving vlogs I have not been liking to use blush as much because my skin just looks so textured right now so I usually end up just kind of going like this when I started getting my eyelashes done I decided that it would probably be financially smart to just do my nails and my toes myself I have been using the D&D &D line which I'm sure if you guys go to a nail salon or have ever been to one you know what it looks like I'll put a picture of it in here I have been using their top coat and their bottom coat when I do my mom's nails the thing that people like about gel is the fact that you don't have to sit there and wait for it to dry it's really convenient you can just get your nails done and cure them under the UV light and then they're dry. So I was using that top coat and it would take my mom's nails forever to dry, like longer than it would if she would have just done regular nail polish. I can't tell if it's the, co the top coat or if it's the actual nail polish itself. I decided to go ahead and buy a new top coat and face coat. I bought a new one and luckily it works. I'm sorry if this isn't interesting guys. I mean, my life is just boring right now. I think I've been in a little bit of a rut just because of the way that my skin has been looking. And you know, usually any other time, I really would not care if it looked good or not, but it's been really hard, especially when I have all this new makeup to try and I'm afraid to do a first impressions because I'm like, okay, well, what if I just don't like the product because of the way that my skin looks and not because of the product itself? That's really like the only thing I've been struggling with, I would say. Everything else is pretty good. I used to, and I do like doing this better, just run my waterline color in my actual waterline and not smudge it out. And I've been trying to smudge it out, but I just don't like the way that it looks on me. I think it like drags my face down versus when I just do the waterline, I think it really opens up my eyes. Okay guys, well this is the finished look. I'm sorry if I was like really all over the place. I'm still kind of trying to like get caught back up from stuff that I needed to get done over quarantine, but couldn't because I couldn't leave my house. As always, all the products that I use will be linked down in the description box for you guys if you're interested in checking any of them out. Thank you so much for 500 subscribers. If you guys like watching these videos, I have a whole playlist of them. I will link it right up here and I will, and I will also link it down in the description box but yeah I really don't have anything else to say and that is very rare for me to not have anything to say thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one bye